Hello everyone, this is D22 with you today from D22 Responses, and yes, go Canucks go. Yeah, 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 that's it. All you Canadians, raise the roof. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up a program called Windows Live Movie Maker, and I am going to show you how that works. So we're just going to do a search for Windows Live, and then we'll bring up Windows Live Movie Maker, and that's the way to do it. You're supposed to do exactly how I type it. So... This is a general straightforward tutorial on how to use and make a video on Windows Live Movie Maker. And then at the end, I'll show you how to render it to full 1080p high definition file. So what we do here is we first have to find a video. So you go to add videos and photos just to start off. And then what you do is you find your video in here. So it usually won't be in sample videos, but that's one example, but that is four by three display output, but we're looking for like a sixteen nine widescreen. So we're going to uh pardon me, sorry. We're going to select a certain format. So this is a quick time video and we'll see if Windows Movie Maker will accept that. So it did. So it accepted the format and what it will do is that it will generally prepare the video for playback performance. So basically while you're waiting for this to happen just the size of the file could just be a variant on how this would work but we're not going to go through that so we're gonna stop it right there and then we're gonna stop preparing it there and then we'll just get rid of this we're gonna remove it so let's just add a smaller file to it so it takes QuickTime movie formats like you see here and then also mp4 so we're gonna open up mp4 because it's just a lot shorter and just a lot more better for this and then there's the movie now this movie was already done in a software I mean it's already been rendered out to full 1080p 1440 by 1080 so what what is going on here is the fact that this movie has been rendered out to this full display there's a lot already been done to this but if you had a video that was say like this let me just take a look at that. If you had a video that was like this, you would have boxes around it. And that's not that doesn't look good because YouTube nowadays allows you to go widescreen. So, I mean, the movie still plays, but you have like these boxes all around your video and it's pretty ugly. So, what you would do is you would make sure that the project view is set to widescreen so that there's no boxes, no black boxes, no black boxes, and I say it again, no black boxes. I hate black boxes that appear all around videos. I mean, I don't hate the videos themselves, I just hate the boxes around it. I hate them. I absolutely just despise them. They're like the bane of all video existence. So we're going to move on. So you've added your video into the project template, and it looks really good for now. But what you can do is you can also add photos as well. You can make a photo collage, and you can also add music. So add whatever music you want. But if you're a YouTuber, add non-royalty free mu add royalty free music so that you don't get copyright issues from YouTube. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to also what you can do is you can record a webcam video, and basically this allows you to do a live capture from your webcam and then enter it into Windows Live Movie Maker. Now this function is really good as well if you have like a local vlogging station and uh, basically it just is one of those things that allows you to do a live capture of it all. Sorry, I just had to close the door. It just allows you to do a live streaming function of your webcam and you can also use a microphone that's built into it. So the microphone that I'm using right now is the one that's lying in and then you can use the Minicam software so that is usually how it works too so we can choose the integrated webcam and then you can click OK there and then what will happen is that you will have these windows called record and cancel and once you finish recording like you see me right now you can click record and then you can click stop or you can click cancel so we're just gonna go to cancel right now so hi everyone okay we're gonna cancel that and that's just the CV error so one of these things that may have happened there is that it just depends on the program that's running so we're not gonna bother with that right now that's the webcam function not working so we're just gonna close the program now my computer is fine it's okay it's just 
that sort of function that usually won't happen. Now, usually what it'll also have is you can have like a title creation system here where you can create your own title. Like I can just make that and you can also choose the font for the text. You can choose the font for the text and then you can choose the size for the text as well. And yeah, it totally just makes it look good. You can just totally customize it the way you want and it will allow your video to just look really, really good. So that's one way of doing it. And you can also set the color of the text as well by going to edit text and the background color will be set to either white or black. So depending on how you want to have that, it's all up to you. And the text is white, we're going to set it to black. So it will usually appear as black and then it'll appear in a transition. So the transition will automatically happen when you have certain things enabled. So that's how you add text and you can add like a scrolling effect and just like a, a scrolling effect here, a swing down, and you can also zoom in and also a standard fade and no effects at all. So to add the effects you just click on whatever effects that you want here and then it'll automatically preview them. So you can just go back and then play the effects there. So pretty straightforward on how to add text effects and you can also add a duration for it. You can set a timer on how you want the effects to work. So that bit of customization is really cool. And what you would usually do as well is you would go into the animations and then you would set transitions and just different types of animations. Like you would set a pixelation, uh, you would set like a flip animation, a cinematic fade, and just a lot of transitions that you can use. So it's really amazing how uh, a standard movie software like this just has so many different functions. And you can go to visual effects and then you can adjust the effects on each of the videos here. It only applies for just certain videos. So you can preview a video effect by clicking the video that you're applying the effect to and then just pointing at it and then looking at it. So it's really cool. I got this thing called edge detection. So that was a really neat little feature that you can add on there. And if you want to get more, then you can just click the down arrow and then there's more. So you can do a mirror vertical, you can do cinematic overlay, uh, fade, fade out to black, just so many effects on this software alone. And you can do like a 360 spin and warp. And finally, a uh, hue color spectrum. So that's like for music videos and all that. So that's another thing that you can do that you can apply to your video as well. So, uh, and you can also set the brightness of the video or the brightness of the effect. So that way it doesn't look dark and it makes it a whole lot easier to see. You can have people see your videos a lot better and generally just have that sort of functionality and just convenience to set the brightness. It's like setting a brightness to your colors that you want. You make your colors a little bit more brighter instead of darker if you're filming this in a dark room. And then for the project, you have to make sure, like I said before, that it's not standard, but 16.9 widescreen. Because HD cameras automatically record to 16.9 widescreen. And if you render it to standard, it'll render a lot faster, but at the same time, it will lose its HD quality. So these are for people that I know that are not able to know how to distinguish between standard 4x3 and widescreen 16.9. 16.9 is the new standard. I mean, standard 4.3, it's not even standard anymore. It's just, it's bollocks, that's what I can say. I mean, I'm sorry I'm sounding so harsh here, but I just don't like boxes around videos. It just looks, it, it makes it look terrible if you have an HD video. I mean, it's ridiculous. But anyways, we're not going to, I'm not going to argue about that. That's another movie, another time. So we're going to make sure that the whole setting here is widescreen. So that when your video plays out, it will play out automatically to widescreen and it'll make it look really, really professional. So once you have that done, you have to make sure that it all plays out to where it goes, like this. So it's widescreen all around. I like it. It's really good. And then you can set you can just preview it, you can do the zoom and just customize it to however you want. And after that you go to edit and then this is the part where you can set your video volume, your fade in, your fade out, and you can adjust the speed, the background color, 
and you can also trim each of your clips like in Sony Vegas so the trim tool allows you to trim certain points of the video and then start at a certain point and then edit a certain point so you can go to cancel there or you can go to set start point set end point so that way you can just set it there and then trim it to however you want so you go back to the home page once you're done everything and then you can save it to either SkyDrive, Facebook, YouTube, Windows Live, and Flickr. And then you can go here to add more services or you can add a plugin as well so that you can put in more sites to share it with like the Blogger or Google Mail. And yeah, you just go to the plugins page and then it allows you to just look up all of that like MediaShare, SmugMug, YouTube, Facebook. And it shows all of the popular ones that you can do so that way it just allows you to upload it anywhere share it with anyone at any time so once you're done what you do is you go to save movie and then the recommended setting usually is recommended setting for this project or common settings for this project now the display size is 1280 by 720 this video so it won't make it look good so what it'll do is that it'll go 1920 by 1080 which is full high definition display and that is the standard for which YouTube can take because 1080p is what YouTube is allowable up to now and it's really cool because I can upload higher higher megabyte files and it'll come out crystal clear and it's just an amazing thing and for this movie that Charlie, uh, my friend made for me here this is a really cool movie <laughs> Charlie Dudson made this for me and he has a site called Dudson Designs and you can just check out that site below so that you can get something from him and I just highly I highly recommend you just to get that sort of thing so it's just amazing what he can do so we're just going to set the start point here set the end point there okay so usually that's how it works We'll just play it back. Didn't turn out that good. So what we would do is that if there was an error like that, we would just delete the movie. Then we would add it again if there was some sort of an error. So what you would do is you would make sure that the video plays back again and that it would just fix the mistakes again. So after that, you would go save movie. It would save it automatically as a Windows Media file and that will allow you to work but you but you click down here to save movie and then you go for high definition display and then it will save it so you can go type in your name and then click save and then after that it will save to the movie format that you want and then you can upload it to YouTube so that is basically it on how to use Windows Live Movie Maker so thanks so much for watching this and I do apologize for my previous rants before on just standard definition but 4x3 display is not really my style anymore because I find that it takes up just just a lot of space with those black bars and I just don't like the black bars so forgive me if I was a little harsh towards the black bars I'm not racist or in any short I'm not racist. I'm not. So let me just uh, end off by saying thank you so much again for watching, and I hope you found this helpful. And if there's any questions that you have about this, feel free to shoot me a comment, and I'll respond to the comment and tell you what to do. And if there's still something that you need to have answered, feel free to send me a personal message, and I'll be happy to get back to you. So until then, get fueled for life. Have a great day, and I'll respond to you another time.